The movie review aggregation site Rotten Tomatoes doesn't always give the most accurate impression of a film's uh, you know, quality. For anybody unfamiliar with the site, if you are, the, the idea is that all the reviews of a film are uh, compiled and categorized as generally positive or generally negative, and then we're given a percentage score. So a movie with a positive percentage above 60 is fresh. Um, ostensibly, if the positive percentage is higher, 70, 80, 90, it's supposed to be pretty good assurance that, that the film is you know, very high quality. The problem is that a film which most critics found just mildly amusing might end up with a 95% fresh score simply because 95% of critics were mildly amused by it. So the 95% is a bit misleading in that case, as we tend to associate 95% with an A-plus grade, but the Rotten Tomatoes grading system, in effect, makes it so that a whole bunch of C-minuses can add up to an A-plus. This is how every Marvel movie passes as critically acclaimed, for example. The other problem is that Film critics are some of the most shameless and dishonest shills in media, which is really saying something. So a very good film that fails to pass the woke litmus test may end up with a 30 or 40 percent. In those cases, it can be enlightening, as people know, to look at the audience score and compare it. Because Rotten Tomatoes also allows regular Joes to leave their reviews and their rating on a one to five star scale. Frequently, movies that are panned for political reasons will have a very lopsided review ratio. Maybe it's a 30 percent from critics, but a 90 percent from audiences. And if you see something like that, you know almost every time that the film is probably pretty decent. Sometimes it'll go the other way, and a film will have a 90% from critics and um, a 30% from audiences. This usually means that the movie is this kind of like meandering, pointless art house tripe that critics pretended to like so that they would seem smart. All in all, a lot can be gleaned from a comparison of the two percentages. So, what can we learn from this? As of last night, my new film, What is a Woman?, had earned a 97% score from the audience with well over 1,000 reviews counted, which is a lot of reviews, by the way, from, from audiences. I mean, there, there are a lot of big box office films that uh, don't get 1,000 reviews in the first week, as we did. 97%. What score did it get from the critics? Well, N-A, not applicable. There's no score. They just haven't reviewed it. None of them. There's one critic review, and it's from Christian Toto, who's a great uh, contributor for The Daily Wire, Outside of that, though, the movie has been completely and totally ignored by the media. Why haven't they watched it? Like, it's, not, it's not that they're panning it. They're just not, they're refusing to watch it. And why is it? Is it because they, uh, they don't know about it or they don't have time to watch it or just they don't think it's very important or whatever? Well, they might be able to make that claim if not for the fact that we sent the screener to media critics and many of them responded to the email that we sent them telling us in so many words to go F ourselves. Actually, in those words exactly, in some cases. So let me read through a few of the responses that we got from film critics. Um, one says, unsubscribe, 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 continuing infinity. Another one says, unsubscribe, lose my email, forget my name. Uh, another one says, hard effing pass. I won't give that transphobic bigot a platform on my site. Never email me again. Another hard pass. Uh, another one says, absolutely effing not. He's a bigot. You should be ashamed for associating with him. Another one, please remove me, from, remove me from your mailing list. I am not interested in anything having to do with Matt Walsh. Another one says, big no thanks. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm not reviewing a film by a bigot. And if that's how who you work with, you can take me off your list. I won't be reviewing anything from you. Uh, another one says, please don't send me anything else from the Daily Wire. I'm not interested. And then we got a bunch of... Uh, uh, this one was good. Okay, here's, here's one that says, hi, trans woman here. Just got your email inquiring if I wanted to review your Nazi transphobic movie. In the future, please send requests like requests like this to dsnuts at gmail.com. Now, I don't think this person realizes that the last part of their email in <laughs> the first part. Hi, uh, I'm a woman. Send the request to dsnuts. All right. Um, and then another one says, take me off your list. I'm not interested in covering content from fear-mongering people whose inqu inquiries into gender and identity are predicated on the basis of taking rights away from people in at-risk communities and spreading misinformation for the sake of grabbing power and wielding it against people. Um, and then a bunch of others. I have no interest in covering this film or anything to do with Matt Walsh. Please never email me again. Okay, so you get the idea. Now, you may hear all that and think, well, of course they responded that way. And in one sense, you're right. I mean, of course they did. But let's not allow them to hide behind the inevitability of their own cowardice and intellectual dishonesty as if they're drawn up by the forces of fate and have no choice but to act like a bunch of spineless little blobfish. 
The fact is that film critics in mass are declaring at the outset that they simply will not even watch one of the most talked about films of the year so far, one audiences are raving about, and which is indeed a legitimate and well-made piece of work. Well-made thanks to our director and producer, not so much to me, but it is well-made. Um, it's not unprecedented for a film to be blackballed to this extent, but it is unusual. Because again, usually what they'll do if they don't like the movie, for political reasons, is they'll, they'll just pan it. And this reveals once again that our cultural gatekeepers are totally beholden to a certain ideological agenda. This doesn't just extend to the people who create the culture, the people who make the film, shows, music, etc. It also and especially extends to the people who decide which pieces of content in each of those categories we ought to be consuming and engaging with. The left's cultural and institutional domination works through multiple layers. Okay, they decide what's made, and if someone manages to make something that they don't approve of, then the gatekeepers and media can step in to make sure that nobody hears about it. The good news is that these gatekeepers have become increasingly impotent as we develop ways of getting around them. And one very effective way of getting around them is to do exactly what we're doing here at The Daily Wire. Build our own institution slowly but surely and sustain it with the support from the audience rather than making ourselves entirely beholden to advertisers, investors, shareholders, and so on. And that's just another good reason to go to whatisawoman.com and subscribe today if you haven't. One other point about the critical reaction to the film, or lack thereof is that it perfectly illustrates the point of the film itself. The left is terrified of the movie, of the question, of the approach we took, the truth that we brought to bear. See, if they thought that our film could be easily debunked, um, then they'd watch it and they'd debunk it. They love doing that. You know, if they really thought it was a bunch of transphobic nonsense, as they claim, then they would watch it and they would just, they would point out all of the nonsense in the movie. If they really thought it was nothing but a bunch of ignorant bigotry, they would delight in pointing out all the ways that such is the case. They'd go through it with a fine-tooth comb. John Oliver would do a whole show dissecting it, playing clips, making snarky comments. But he can't do that. None of them can. Because there's no rescuing the people who made fools of themselves in the film. There's no defending gender ideology in general. There's no way for them to answer the question without destroying their own worldview in the process. Now, at some level, they know that the film is successful in debunking gender ideology because at some level they know that gender ideology is a flimsily constructed tower of Jenga blocks wobbling in the breeze and ready to fall over if just one block is removed. And with our film, we're going for the block way at the base of the tower, the blocks the other blocks are sitting on, which means that the tower is certain to topple. The left doesn't want to be there to watch it happen for fear that it will fall directly on their heads. So they look the other way, they run the other direction, they cover their eyes, they close their ears. Hope that eventually we all get bored and stop talking about the fact that their worldview is incoherent, absurd, and poisonous to civilization. But we're not going to stop, unfortunately for them. And I have to say, I also enjoy the filmmaking process so much that I don't plan to stop doing that either. It's pretty fun. I'll give the critics uh, many more movies, which I'm sure that they will pretend don't exist. They can do that all they want. They're still, I must say today, canceled. Listen, hit that subscribe button right now. Do it right now. I thank you for your compliance. It is somewhat appreciated. 